Hello, my sax playing friend, Alexander Mathias here from saxophonemasterclass.com. If you're confused about how to improvise over chords when playing the saxophone, this lesson is for you. I'm gonna take you through what chords actually mean, what notes you should be playing when certain chords come up, and how you can make your improvisation sound more cohesive when you're playing to backing tracks and when you're playing with other musicians. Now this is the third part of my three-part saxophone improvisation challenge. So if you missed part one and part two, go ahead and check those out now. There's links in the description of this video, or you can just go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash SIC and that way you can access the entire challenge all three videos along with PDFs and backing tracks that you can download so that you can work on your improvisation skills offline. So in part one and part two I gave you a backing track for you to practice improvising to and in that backing track there's actually three chords that are being played and I'm going to explain to you what those chords are and how you can start playing specific notes when those chords are being played so that you can sound like you're really gelling with the backing track. So first of all, what is a chord? Well, a chord is two or more notes that are played simultaneously. So that's why we can't play chords on the saxophone. We can only play one note at a time on the saxophone, but a piano or a guitar can actually play multiple notes at the same time, which is why those instruments can play chords chords and instruments like the saxophone, the trumpet, the flute cannot play chords. However, like I said, a chord is made up of individual notes. So we can actually play the individual notes of the chord on the saxophone. So let's take the first chord of the backing track that I used in part one and part two of the saxophone improvisation challenge. The first chord is the chord C major, and this is the tonic chord of the backing track. That's because the backing track is in the key of C major on the alto sax. So the chord of C major is C, E, and G. The second chord of the backing track is A minor, and the three notes of A minor are A, C, and E. And finally, the third chord of the backing track is F major, which is F, A, and C. So when any of these chords come up, we can actually play the individual notes of the chord on the saxophone. So I'm going to play the backing track right now and then I'm going to play you each of the individual notes as the chord comes up in the backing track. Let me show you what I mean. So there I was playing all the chord tones as the chord was being played on the piano in the backing track. When the C major chord came up, I played C, E, G. When the A minor chord came up, I played A, C, E. And when the F major chord came up, I played F, A, C. And as you can hear, when I play the chord tones on the sax, it fits perfectly with the backing track. Now I go into a lot more detail in my PDF guide that you can get for free at saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash part three. And I even give you some more information on harmony and chords to really help you understand what all of this means. So this is another great tool for when you're improvising on the sax. You can use the chord tones to create other melodies while you're improvising as well. Now I showed you the C major pentatonic scale, which are the notes C, D, E, G, A, and you might notice that a lot of the notes in that scale actually come up in the chords of the backing track. C, E, and G, for example, of the chord C major are all in the C major pentatonic scale. But then we have F major, which is F, A, and C. A and C are part of the C major pentatonic scale, but F is outside of the C major pentatonic scale. So this is something to keep in mind. When the F major chord comes up, we can also add in the note F to sound cohesive with the backing track. But because F major has A and C in it, that C major pentatonic scale still works really well over this whole backing track with these three chords. 
You may also notice that there's one note that is in every single one of the chords, and that's the note C, which is why I said in part one of the challenge that you should focus in on note C when you're practicing improvising on one note, because it's always gonna work over every single chord, and that's why. C is in every chord of this backing track. So now that we have a basic understanding of what these chords are and what the chord tones are, we can start to use this with our improvising. So the first step is to be able to hear the chords as they come up. So you wanna to listen to the backing track and just play the first note of the chord as it comes up. In the backing track and at the end of this video i'm going to give you the backing track with the chord symbols with the chord notes as they come up i want you to practice to that just playing the root note of the chord which is the first note of the chord so when c major comes up you play c when a minor comes up you play a when f major comes up you play f then i want you to practice playing all three notes like i just showed you play c e g when c major comes up play a c e when a minor comes up and play f a c when f major comes up this is a great way to practice the chord tones of the chord so that you can use this when you're improvising. Eventually you want to experiment with the C major pentatonic scale but then emphasize one or more of the chord tones when the chord comes up in the music. So if C major comes up you want to emphasize C, E and G. When the A minor chord comes up you want to emphasize A, C and E. And when the F major chord comes up you want to emphasize F, A and C. Now you can still play C major pentatonic which is C, D, E, G, A, but you also wanna think about emphasizing the chord tones as those chords come up. So this is the next level to improvising on the sax. You're not just thinking about the C major pentatonic scale, you're thinking about the chord tones as well. So let me give an example of playing the C major pentatonic scale while emphasizing the chord tones as they come up. So you should be able to hear that I'm combining the pentatonic scale with the chord tones of the chord that's being played. And this makes for more melodic improvisation that sounds cohesive to the backing track. And this is the foundation for improvising over any song in any key. When you hear a chord or when you see a chord symbol, you should know how to play the notes of that chord. And then you also should know what the best scale is to play over the chord sequence of that song. So in this case, the C major pentatonic scale is a really great scale to experiment with when you're improvising over these three chords. But almost every song that you play, especially popular music, especially traditional songs, has one, two, or three different scales that are going to work over the whole song, and it's going to make your improvisation sound great. And the way to figure this out is through harmony, is through chords, is through understanding the common tones between all the chords in the song. But the most common way to figure out what scale works over a song is just to look at the key signature and understand what key the song is in. If the song is in the key of C major, just like this backing track, then the C major pentatonic scale is more than likely going to work over most of the harmony. The C major scale is also going to work, which is C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. If the song is in the key of D major, for example, then the D major pentatonic scale is what's going to work in that song or the notes of the D major scale. Now there's other scales that would work in these keys as well, but these are the two most fundamental scales that are gonna work over almost all the harmony that's in a song of a specific key. 
Now I go into a lot more detail in my PDF guide that you can get for free at saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash part three. And I even give you some more information on harmony and chords to really help you understand what all of this means. This can get really complicated, but I'm trying to simplify it and really try to help you to understand what a chord is and how it relates to improvising on the sax. So I really hope you got an understanding of how chords help you with improvising on the saxophone. Remember to watch part one and two as that's gonna really help with understanding how to improvise as well. If you wanna get full access to the three parts of this saxophone improvisation challenge along with all the PDF guides for each part, along with backing tracks for the tenor sax, alto sax, baritone sax, and soprano sax, just go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash SIC and there's a link in the description of this video as well. You can get instant access to all the videos, all the PDFs and all the backing tracks absolutely free. Now I'm just scratching the surface of how to improvise in this three-part challenge but if you want to go even deeper with me I actually have an entire course that goes into a lot more detail. I show you exactly how you can improvise over your favorite songs, how you can start jamming with other musicians, how you can start playing the blues step by step on the saxophone and eventually start playing really cool melodic saxophone solos just like the players on your favorite recordings. It's all inside my saxophone improvisation course just go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash improvisation and I'll give you all the details there's also a link in the description of this video all right that's it my friend I really hope you enjoyed this lesson if you did please subscribe please like and please comment below if there's anything that was really helpful for you if there was an aha moment for you during this lesson or any of the other two parts of the saxophone improvisation challenge and I really just want to get your feedback on what you think about this approach I really hope this is easy to understand and you can get more ideas with how to improvise on the saxophone all right my friend until next time enjoy improvising and happy playing